Before we move into the main topic of tonight's video, it's important that I show some respect to a machine that has been foundational to the Jenny's Garage channel, very early project, which is no longer under our roof. The CT90, CT125 project, Elsa Pan, left the premises just a little while ago. Today's the day we say goodbye to the CT90-125 project. It's going through a good home though. Carson and Arlette <laughs> are going to be proud new owners. They're staying local, staying in California, which is nice. Mind if I drop by sometime? Oh, of course, yeah, yeah we'll go real. <laughs> All right. Wanted to let you guys know how this story goes from here. Been a good ride. It stings a little bit, but it went to good people. And they said they'd send me pictures. It's kind of funny how you sold that. We all know you're going to get another motorcycle in like two days. <laughs> you might have it picked out already. I took the crankshaft, camshaft, out of the DR350. Tried to convince myself that there's something wrong with the decompression mechanism, but I don't think there is. The way it works is this pin acts as a camshaft lobe, temporary camshaft lobe on the exhaust valve so that as the camshaft is turning and the piston is building pressure, it opens up the exhaust valve just slightly to release some of that pressure, make it easier to start, which is why the motor still has healthy compression. It just probably doesn't have as much as it would have without this. But this only acts when the engine is stopped or moving very slowly. As this spins up, there's an arm here that gets pulled outwardly by centrifugal force flattening out the temporary lobe. Pretty creative, isn't it? Yeah. And the camshaft operates as if that wasn't there at all. I have one last hope that maybe it wasn't a waste of time tearing this apart. The cam chain was tight too, so that wasn't the problem. The last hope is maybe somebody installed the camshaft incorrectly and the valve timing was off by a tooth or two. There's evidence by this safety washer plate. Someone's been in there before with their hammer punch, claws. I'll put this back together correctly, see how it runs. Do you have any appetite for commentary tonight? I don't know. I'm still feeling spicy and I think I'm getting sick. I'm less spicy than I was last night though. I was just about ready to trip Jake when he walked by. Well, your finger's the one on the record button, so use it at will. Some of you fellers told me I should not speak on subjects that I don't understand, like perception and radio waves. Everybody knows radio waves can't go through metal. The idea is, if I were a radio wave, the landscape would look completely different than it does to me. Jake, the human. And how about this? Similarly to how a radio wave sees that fuel tank as a fog, when I know that it's actually a yellow <laughs> and blue vessel that holds fuel 
for a machine that people ride around on. I know all this other information that the radio wave doesn't. What other actions, entities, universes are right here with us that we don't know about? Just a couple channels off. How you doing? I'll let you know when this is put back together. I beat you to it. I've got the motor put back together and a couple pointers for any of you guys working on a similar job of removing and installing a camshaft are to get the camshaft out, I needed to remove the cam chain tensioner so the chain would be loose enough. And to set the valve timing, I positioned the piston at top dead center using a straw in the spark plug hole. With the motor in that position, there's two marks on the camshaft that need to be parallel to the top of the head. In this inspection hole, there's a mark on the flywheel which appears when the motor is nearly at top dead center, but I set the camshaft according to the actual position of the piston rather than that mark. We'll know probably in a few moments if I was right or wrong about that. Thank you to the guys who commented about the noise that I heard being the decompression mechanism on the camshaft. I agree that that's probably what the clicking noise is. I bet it's still there right now and I don't think it's a problem. Let's see. Yeah, still there. I'm not as nervous as I was before though. I didn't put the fuel tank on because I planned to strip that paint off of there right away and I just have to take it off again. Instead of using that gas tank, I'm going to introduce and showcase something that I bought a while ago but have never used. IV pole fuel supply. I'll get this hooked up to the carburetor and then we'll see if it starts. The fuel line is connected to the carburetor. Turn the gas on. I don't know if it'll be any better or not. I don't think I have an opinion. When I start this up on choke, right when it starts, the idle starts to fluctuate. So listen for that. If it's steady, we may have made some positive change. I hope it runs at all. Not off to a good start. See? Didn't hurt me though. open up the garage door. It might sound a little bit different. I won't say it's running better that I can tell. I'll let it warm up for a moment and then take it off choke. Off choke. That 
might be better. Usually about this time it starts to slow down and eventually quit. Might be hanging in there though. It sounds more even to me. Did you hear it speed up? I think so. I may just be too picky. Let's see if it'll rev. I think that camshaft might have been one too thought. Should I take it for... Hmm. Yeah. I think it's better. I don't like it that when I give it gas off idle, it quits. But that could be an issue with the low speed adjustment screw on the bottom of the carburetor. I'll adjust that. All right, this is the best I can come up with. If you listen to the idle, it will fluctuate even though I don't touch the throttle. Right oh, there. Yeah. Did you hear it speed up? Yeah. Slowed down again just now. Yeah. I don't know what's going on with it. Hopefully, there's some geniuses watching that can help me out. Maybe a vacuum leak. I'll figure it out. Can't help it. If you're interested in watching yesterday's video, I'll put a link to that up on the screen. And if you'd like to see what's next, I'll put tomorrow's video up there as well. Thanks for watching.